to talk more about this, I'm now joined by Darren Proctor, who is the National Secretary of the RMT Union. Um, Darren, thanks for, thanks for speaking to us. I mean, your members must be devastated. How are they taking the news? Absolutely devastated, as you say. Woke up this morning, just thought it was going to be a normal day. For those that were working on board the vessels, there was a notice that went round uh, that got sent to, to us, to some shoreside members, and then a notification come through of a company uh, presentation that was supported by DP World about the future viability of P&O ferries. That presentation was then given at 10 past 11. Um, prior to the, the announcement being made, we seen arrivals of crew coming in by coaches and security, secure and, you know, escorting them in. The announcement at 10 past 11 said, quite briefly, as of today, you're all being made redundant and we can continue with, you know, bit UK seafarers on board the vessels. And that was it? As, ab as abrupt as that? As abrupt as that. No consultation, no negotiation, no dialogue with any trade union that's impacted by this. Um, and that was, the, you know, the, the news that was broke. So what are you advising members now? Is it true you're advising people not to leave the boats if they're still on board? Our members are on board the vessels, you know, absolutely devastated by what's going on. You've got personal belongings on board the vessel. You've got security coming up. We're, you know, uh, trained in, in, in handcuff and in balaclavas and stuff. Absolutely fearful for the... Security in balaclavas? Security in balaclavas. We're handcuffs on board the vessels. Were any crew members handcuffed? No, not that we know of, yeah. OK, so I don't know why they've taken that approach, but they have. And this was to escort the new crew that was coming on board the vessels that are from, from, UK, from UK and also from overseas that have been recruited by a UK agency and asked to sign non-disclosure agreements. Devastated. And the company says that their current business in its current state is unviable with this £100 million loss um, in light of the pandemic. You know, other travel firms have been hit too, obviously. Um, what do you make of that? Well, P&O's been financially mismanaged for a number of years uh, and they weren't saying that when they were taking money off the UK government for, um, you know, for, for the furlough and stuff. You know, so the financials of P&O have been under question for a number of years. But, you know, that's down to their mismanagement. But we could have sat around the table. We could have discussed this like any normal company would when there's financial... But they've just bought two new vessels for 200 million and they're supported by DP World, who's, you know, not short of a bob or two. So what are you going to do now? I mean, your, your members can't stay on these boats indefinitely. No, we've got members who are getting off now because of the, obviously fearful of the situation on board. And we'll be, you know, getting political support. We're in contact with MPs locally, whether it be Dover, Hull, etc. We're also calling on government for political intervention. So you're going to fight this? We're going to fight this all the way. This, you know, we, we can't allow this to happen. This, you know, puts a, a knife right through the heart of UK maritime. We're supposed to be a maritime nation. We're supposed to be looking after and building, you know, the maritime strategy and putting people at the heart of this. And this is what a, a company, a, a brand like P&O is doing, you know, to individuals that are around us today, throwing them on the scrap heap, putting, you know, the, the economy of Dover effectively on notice because obviously a lot of them are local seafarers that spend the money in the local businesses. I imagine a lot of them have been working for P&O for decades. I mean, a lot of the people we saw earlier were quite young, but there must be uh, people who have been working there 20, 30 years. Some have been working there 20, 30 years, and on the other end of the scale, you've got individuals two, three, four years who thought that they were embarking on a career in the maritime sector and it was, a, it was a career for them. They've got mortgages, young kids, they've been coming in this building today, devastated, crying, you know, wondering what they're going to do. Um, and just the kind of the impersonal message from P&O and the way that they've gone about this is absolutely appalling. And would we, can we, could we see potentially more disruptions here in Dover, Most like definitely. the one we saw this afternoon? Most definitely. More, di more, more disruption in Dover, more disruption in other parts around the UK as a consequence of P&O ferries and their actions and the way that they've treated their employees today.